Okay, so shall we start then? So good evening. Um, warm welcome to the first third Saturday lecture. My name is Ryoko Matsuba. I work here at the Sensory Institute as a lecturer in digital arts and humanities. I'm pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Rosanna um, Niels Perez to our lecture this evening. Um, Rosanna will be de delivering the talk titled A Home Don Quixote, the, the precursor of a series of our books. Um, Dr. Rosanna Niels Perez skilled the Japanese dyeing techniques, Hatazome and Yuzen, has been a sensory fellow at the Sensibility Institute since last September. Her current research centers on the works of Serizawa Keisuke, a renowned textile artist and key figure in the Minge movement. She is exploring Serizawa's innovative use of katazome dyeing on paper, a technique that distinguished his acclaimed works. This evening, Rosanna will present her discoveries on how Serizawa interpreted Don Quixote, focusing on his illustrated version of the tales and the subsequent Simpan Ehon Don Quixote book. She will explore these works through the lens of the Minge movement, principles, and Serizawa's own artistic development. The session will run until around 7, followed for 10 to 15 minutes by Q&A. For our online attendees, please note there are two distinct textbook boxes available for you, your use. The chat box for general discussion and comments and Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of the screen, dedicated to submitting your questions. Please post your questions for Rosanna um, in the Q&A box, either before or during the session. Then I'm now going to pass the floor to Rosanna. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's very nice to see such a good attendance tonight to my lecture. I hope it will be of interest to you. Uh, so today I will talk about the illustrated version of the novel by Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha, that was created by Kisuke Serizawa, textile artist, collector, and active member of the Minge movement, the four crafts movement in Japan. So I have been fascinated by Serizawa's work for a couple of years now, when I was investigating his textiles. And I came across his illustrated book, and I thought, well, why did a textile artist create such a book based on this very famous novel that, as you know, has traveled across time, crossing cultural boundaries from the 17th century, that is 400 years now. I have been able to continue this research here at the Sainsbury Institute, and I've been inquiring uh, in the collection of the British Museum, the Victoria and Albert Museum, and also I did a research trip in to Spain in December that allowed me to inquire the books. I will begin my lecture by pointing out how the commission reached Soet Suyanagi, who was the leader of the Minge movement in Japan, and how it was later mediated by Yuga Kobunsho until it reached Serizawa. Following this, I will introduce the 1936 Ehon Don Quixote, contextualized in the Minga ideals of mass production, collaborative work, use of local materials and local crafts. I will then refer to the Serizawa books as a creative outcome that eventually grew from this commission. Finally, I will compare Serizawa's first illustrated book to the Shimpan e Hon Don Quixote that was created in 
1929, an invitation from Lando Warner, a curator of Far Eastern Art at Harvard University's Folk Art Museum, reached Soet Suyanagi to lecture at Harvard University. In a letter dated March 22, 1929, Yanagi replied to Lando Warner, I quote, after pondering over the matter, I came to the conclusion that it might be good for me to tra travel Europe first so that I may be able to grasp the spirit of Western art and life more clearly. Also, this journey will give me a good chance of nourishing my childish English." End of quote. So Yanagi toured Europe for three months with Shibaru Saburo, who was a medical doctor, friend and supporter of the Minge movement and Shoji Hamada, the potter, who would stay at St. Ives together with Bernard Leach. Yanagi finally reached Boston in September 1929, where he stayed until July of the following year. Apart from the Harvard lectures, Yanagi wrote a paper on Korean pottery from the Morse collection and did extensive research and collected from the Lafcadio, Hearn, and Whitman writings. One of the outcomes of this trip was his acquaintance with Carl Keller, a vice chairman and trustee of the Harvard Yenshin Institute, who also collected Don Quixote books. On September 9, 1929, Yanagi wrote a letter to Yugako Buncho, a prominent bibliographer based in Kyoto, whom Yanagi had come into close contact with in the early 1920s. Yanagi requested him to find two Japanese texts that appeared in the bibliography of editions compiled by Juan Suñé Benagués and Juan Suñé Fumbuena. Keller had found the titles of these two texts in their critical bibliography of editions of Don Quixote printed between 1605 and 1917. The two Japanese translations enclosed in Keller's letter were Matsui Shoujo's 1896 translation and Sasaki Kuni's 1909 edition. On Matsui Shoujo's translation, Benagues and Fonbuena described it as a simple translation trial that having suppressed a great number of episodes from the story, reduced the Quixote to a tenth of the original book. The editions and adaptations available in 1929 were translations from the English language, including several adaptations of illustrated books for children. Besides the two mentioned editions, Yugaku sent a two volume book translation by Shimamura Hogetsu and Katagami Noburo, which was one of the few complete Don Quixote editions available at the time. It was not included in Benagues and Fumbuena's critical bibliography. And in a letter sent on December 12th from Yanagi to Yogako Buncho, he expressed how grateful Keller was for his Don Quixote books. He also mentioned that Keller had already gathered around 250 to 260 editions of the Don Quixote books. Now, if we take a look at the illustration in this book, we can see Paul Gustave Doré's engravings. One of the most prominent illustrated versions of Don Quixote that dominated the European imagination during the 19th and part of the 20th century. As we can see in the scene where Don Quixote is portrayed reading the books of Knight Errantry, the highly detailed image that unravels his imagination reflects a style where fiction and reality interplay. Rachel Smith's scholarship indicates that Doré's interpretation of Don Quixote is characterized by 19th century French romanticism, visible in the use of fantastic imagery and offering a sentimental interpretation of the novel. So I will not go on discussing this kind of interpretation, but I'd like to point out that this kind of European portrayal of the errant knight in the Japanese books greatly disappointed Keller, who was expecting the Japanese artists 
to have created the illustrations for the book using local techniques. In the summer of 1935, Keller's frustration with the Don Quixote books drove him to request a commission from a Japanese Nihonga artist, inquiring Yuga Kobunsho about the costs of such a request. This led to discussions between Kawai Kanjiro, Yuga Kobunsho, and Yanagi, agreeing that a Tando Kubon type book with color illustrations would fit Keller's desire. And this is how the domestication into a Japanese Don Quixote began. A Tando Kubon is a type of Japanese classic book that was first developed during the early Edo period. The combination of text and illustration created using woodblock printing appeared in different styles to create the books. In this slide, we see a 17th century Tando Kubon entitled Atagojiso no Monogatari. As we can see in these illustrations, there's a limited color palette of red, green, and yellow, which was hand painted after the black ink was printed. If we ask ourselves, why did the Minge members uh, decide that Tando Kubon would be the best way to portray the Don Quixote? Well, Yanagi recognized woodblock printing as a mass producing technique that reached a wide audience. It was also an indirect technique, meaning that the artisan would not engage into self-expression while producing the prints. Also contextualizing the original novel that was written in the 17th century with the printing production of the 17th century in Japan, and regarding that the Tando Kubon illustrations were generally presented in a simple and humble style, we can understand why Tando Kubon resonated with Yanagi's folk crafts ideals. As we can see in the Ehon Don Quixote, the simplicity and compositional elements portrayed in Serizawa's illustrations highly contrast with the overemphasized details in Doreste's depiction. Serizawa's rendition of the story resulted in a set of 31 scenes with no text, except for the table of contents included in the beginning of the book. Following the Yamato style, he used the Hikime Kagibana to express facial features. This feature, can be associated with the tale of King Genji picture scroll, where the characters are represented with slit eyes and a hook nose. Another characteristic of the Yamatoe incorporated in the book is the Fukinuki Yatai, which means blown off roof, in which the roofs of buildings are removed to provide a glimpse into the interior from above. This perspective give, gives a bird's eye view and the artist that used it would represent the architecture in the scenes in a detailed and realistic way. The Don Quixote was portrayed as a samurai in full armor. In some scenes wearing his kuwagata or helmet. And similar to the Tando Kubon I showed you in the previous slide, the color palette in the illustrated Don Quixote comprises red, green, and yellow. Now I'd like to explain how the book was conceived. Although Serizawa began reading Don Quixote at the end of 1935, and that was the Shimamura and Katagami translation containing Dore's illustrations, it became a real challenge for him to get through the vastness of Don Quixote as Yugaku described it. For the prototype of the second scene, Serizawa used woodblock printing, a, a technique he wasn't accustomed to. Keller was expecting his book to be completed by the spring of 1936, but Serizawa struggled to continue. And in the summer of 1936, despite the fact that Serizawa stayed away from home, renting inns and lodging houses, to devote himself completely to the production of the book, he found the struggle too great, gave up and started creating another book.
he entertained himself with the Wasome in that time. And he completed this book in September 1936 before the Ehon Don Quixote. So this actually became the first of the Serizawa books. It was published by the Japan Folk Crafts Association in a limited edition of 115 copies. And the book contains the process and the tools involved in Japanese dyeing, something that Serizawa was very familiar with. Returning to the Ehon Don Quixote, Serizawa was able to resume production and complete the book after Yanagi's advised him to use kapatsuri. This is a stencil printing technique in which black is applied directly on the stencil. So kapatsuri was considered inferior to woodblock printing. One of the reasons is that the print, the paint tends to bleed out from the borders of the stencil, increasing the, the probability of making mistakes. In early September 1936, Yugaku finally received two test prints. And on October 24 of the same year, six scenes from the book were displayed at the opening ceremony of the Japan for Crafts Museum in Tokyo. Taking a closer look at this illustration, after the black was applied using the stencils, the hand painted red green and yellow colors that serve as decoration for the black outlines were incorporated following the Tando Kubon. And this means that the hand painting details have slight differences between all the 75 copies. In Yugaku's text, The Origins of a Don Quixote Picture Book, he points out that the work was done collaboratively. Serizawa's children and staff helped with the printing dyeing and color application. Asada Kihachiro was the print mounter and the lacquer work was done by Suzuki Shigeo. It was bound in the Furotoji style in which the pages are folded in two. Now, Serizawa was described as an artist who was drawn to details. So his keen eye would have been carefully supervised in the whole process. The selection of the scenes was Serizawa's and on this, I'd like to address that he had complete autonomy because yeah, as Yanagi mentioned, he isolated himself to complete the request. In the scholarship related to the illustrated Don Quixote, it is mentioned that amongst the visual representations of Cervantes classic, and we can consider Picasso's or Salvador Dali's uh, representation amongst others, Serizawa's illustrated Don Quixote was considered masterful in the incorporation of ma Japanese material culture and thorough in the depiction of crucial episodes from the story. Serizawa's Don Quixote relied on a careful selection of the scenes that were most important in the book. But I also consider that the rest illustrations that I showed you before might have served as a guide to the settings that he portrayed. Another aspect to consider was the type of imagery that fed Serizawa's Im imagination at the time of the creation of this book. I was recently made aware of this woodblock print by Sukiyoka Yoshitoshi from the 19th century, depicting a ferocious tiger during one of Sato Masakiyo's hunts. Like Serizawa's scene, the sprint represents a samurai confronted with a tiger. Now, printing is not my area of expertise, so I asked specialist Dr. Ryoko Matsuba about the relevance of this print in Japanese art history. And she explained that in Kabuki theater, the name Sato Masakiyo is an alias for Kato Kiyomasa, a prominent figure in the plays. Kato Kiyomasa was a renowned warrior, who was celebrated in folklore for his formidable strength, particularly for his expedition to Korea, where he is said to have slayed a tiger who had been attacking his camp. The story of the tiger's defeat became widely known in Japan. 
I looked into this and found that during the 19th century, there were various representations of Kato Kiyamasa's hunt. He was one of the three senior commanders during the Seven Year War in Korea, known as the Injin War that started in 1592. The reason why his name had to be altered was due to regulations imposed by the Tokugawa government, where kabuki performances were prohibited from using real names or representing actual historical events. Presumably, Serizawa's decision to rely on this former depiction could have been suggested by Yanagi, who held high regard for the Museum of Fine Arts Boston collection becoming familiar with it during his stay in the US in 1929. Now, relating to the local materials that Yanagi proposed as greatly important to create for crafts, for the illustrated Don Quixote, high quality Japanese paper was one of the main sources for the book. And this could have been directed by Yudako Bunsho, whose expertise in book publishing and handcrafted paper made him the ideal supervisor. To elaborate on this, it was in 1933 that he founded, along with his wife Shidu, the self-publishing company Kojitsuan, located on the outskirts of Kyoto. Apart from his notable research on the English poet William Blake and his translation of Dante's Divine Comedy, Yugaku, along with Shidu, set out on publishing an array of handmade books. Amongst the titles, I'd like to mention the book, Blake and Whitman, that was co-edited with Yanagi and published in 1931 and his masterwork on William Blake's Songs of Innocence, tra translated by Yugaku, and bound with a katasome dyed cover by Serizawa in 1933. And from, from 1933, Serizawa worked on at least four books for Yugaku, amongst all, of, all his other design work. Another outstanding activity that Yugaku continued until his late years was investigating and publishing on Japanese paper. In 1937, Yugaku received an academic grant to carry out historical and geographical research on Japan's handmade paper. He set out on a journey with Shido to visit and survey paper producing villages nationwide. They completed their activities in the spring of 1940, despite the building tensions around the Pacific War. Through their continued endeavors, they became pioneers in paper research. This three-year inquiry resulted in the publication of Kamisuki Muratabi Nikki on the slide. And it is a compilation of paper samples of various qualities from different villages in Japan. A great number of these villages have discontinued their craft. Therefore, this is an important scholarship on Japanese paper. Other publications from Yugaku worth mentioning are Washifudoki, Nihon no Kami, and Handmade Paper of Japan. Now, why is this relevant to the topic of the illustrated Don Quixote? Well, if we take a look at the Serizawa books, starting from the Ehon Don Quixote, there was a sustained production even during the Second World War period, a time when materials were scarce. As a way to overcome the shortage of materials, the Moegi Kai Group, an association of artisans that was founded in the 1940s and led by Serizawa, focus on collecting materials from all over the country to continue producing crafts. But we can also presume that Yugako Bunsho provided the network of the papermaking villages to Serizawa and the Minge members, considering that he had been engaged in fieldwork from 1937 to 1940. I'd like to mention another important event 
And it is one of the many trips in which Serizawa served as an artistic advisor for the Minge movement. He visited Ogawa in Saitama Prefecture, which is not very far from Tokyo, to supervise dyed handmade paper at the Prefectural Paper Making Institute. In August 1935, Yanagi appointed him as a temporary consultant to help with coloring and design. He was assisting with both hand stencil dyed and color dyed paper. It was one of the first survey trips that Serizawa undertook to advise on paper dyeing. Another significant moment was Serizawa's first trip to Okinawa in 1939, when he engaged in bingata dyeing and also discovered a katasome dye piece on paper. And its significance relies on opening Serizawa to the possibility of dyeing on paper using katasome instead of fabric. And you might think, well, he was already doing that when he was creating his books using kapatsuri. However, both, both techniques have different limitations. Apart from the bleeding of the paint through the borders, in the kapatsuri technique, the time-consuming process of adding color by hand limits the addition to fewer copies. In contrast, in katasome, one applies rice paste on paper and then dyes the exposed parts of the surface, making it easier to blend the colors and create polychromatic compositions. And it also involves a faster process. However, the paper can tear when washing off the rice paste. And this is one of the limitations of katasome dyeing on paper. So in order to master the technique, Serizawa embarked on an experimental phase of trial and error between 1939 and 1942 trying out different types of paper. It is noteworthy to mention that Japanese paper is especially strong, but not all papers can resist this process of washing of the rice paste. Serizawa's first set of books, as you can see in the timeline, were produced in Kapatsuri until he finally mastered the dyeing technique on paper around 1942. From this time on, he started privately publishing a growing number of books. One of the first books that exemplified his long dedication to perfecting his skill is Katasome Monshi that you've seen on the screen. It is a compilation of dyed patterns on paper. Serizawa incorporated vegetable dyes and pigments to achieve more vivid colors in the compositions. He also produced unique books created entirely using hand-painted illustrations. As we can see on the timeline, in 1943, he published at least six books using the katasome technique. These editions span from 30 to 100 copies per title. And this newly acquired skill encouraged Serizawa to begin creating his calendars in 1945, where he excelled in design and craftsmanship. His research on paper resulted in the book Kami Oskuru Hitotachi that was created in 1950. It is a limited edition of 50 copies that portrays the three paper producing villages of Ogawa, Gundo, and Yagyu located in various regions in Japan. And this was a particularly difficult time for Serizawa because he was living in temporary accommodations after his house burned down in 1945 as a result of air raids during the Second World War. Taken a zoom into 1955, once Serizawa was settled in his house in Tokyo, which he later transformed into a workshop, he founded the Serizawa Paper Dyeing Research Institute in his residence. 
It was a space dedicated to mass producing not only books, but also calendars, cards, fans, and other paper crafts. He continued to hone this paper dyeing skill that he called somegami and pursued many book projects. A year later in 1956, he received the title of living national treasure, a distinction that highlights an important intangible cultural property for a particular skill. From this moment on, Serizawa became a well-known figure in the Japanese artistic society adding to his individuality as an artist. As we can see, he continued to produce numerous books between the 1960s and 1980s. His commitment to book production was maintained until the age of 85 when he produced his last titles. One of the major supporters of his books was Go Hachi, who from 1951 onwards, published more than 20 titles of the Serizawa books, including the new illustrated Don Quixote. Gohachi was a gallery initially based in Osaka, which was run by his longtime artist fellow, Yamanochi Kinsaburo, also known as Shimpu in the artistic circles. So we call him Shimpu for the rest of my lecture. Serizawa met Shimpu in 1924, long before his involvement with Minge, and he stayed by Serizawa's side, supporting his exhibitions and book projects from the 1920s. There was another publisher by the name of Moriguchi Taro, who published various Serizawa books, particularly in the 1950s and 60s. At this point, the Serizawa books, which were printed in limited editions of around 250 to 280 copies and involved a high cost, received the attention of Minge followers and detractors as objects that were not within the folk crafts genre, but instead were considered art objects. Moreover, Serizawa's network grew as he gained notoriety in Japan, allowing him to reach a wider audience. One of his long-standing friendships was Eudal Serra, Spanish sculptor born in Barcelona who lived in Japan for 13 years from 1935 to 1948. While living in Kobe, Serra began to surround himself with people connected to the Minge circles one of them being Shimpu, who I talked about earlier. And also Serra encountered one of his friends from his youth, Cels Gomez, who was another Spanish collector who became fascinated with folk crafts. He actually, he actually ended up collecting around 400 kokeshi that he brought back to Barcelona on his return in 1946. It is still unclear how Serizawa and Serra met, but it's very likely that Shinpu brought them together. Serra also collected Japanese folk crafts, and on his return to Spain, he began to disseminate Minge objects by showcasing his private collection. He also got in touch with August Paniella, a historian and ethnologist who opened the Museo Etnologico of Barcelona in February 1949. Paniella was able to champion Serra's expeditions to Japan to collect objects for the museum in the 1950s. For example, in 1957, when Serra returned to Japan, the first thing he did when he arrived was to visit Serizawa, as you can see in his travel log. He also acquired Serizawa's stencil dyed papers and a sample book, which unfortunately has been lost. In 1966, Serizawa traveled to Spain and visited Barcelona to see his friend Serra again. Hamada, who had been in Barcelona the year before, recommended Serizawa to visit a few artistic venues. And Serizawa followed suit 
And, but he also visited Sarah's private collection and the collection in the Museo Ethnology of Barcelona. Serizawa collected folk craft objects from Catalonia and was influenced by these objects as described in publications related to his collection. In Ricard Bruce's scholarship, where he delves into the connection between the Spanish artists who established the Cobalto 49 Association and the Minge movement, it's compelling to see how folk crafts from Japan had an exceptional exposure in Barcelona in the 1950s and substantially contributed to the collection in the Museo Ethnologic of Barcelona. We can see that objects included in the Biblioteca Nacional de Catalunya collection and other private collections are an outcome of the significant expeditions that Eudal Serra did to Japan from the 1950s. The recent exhibition held at the Museo Ethnologique from June 2023 until February 2024 that showcased Serizawa's textile work, I was able to see a display dedicated to the books. There were three illustrated Don Quixote books. Uh, on the top left, the, the first edition from 1936. In the middle, the Shimpan Ejon Don Quixote that I will introduce next in my lecture. And a smaller, briefer version at the bottom that I will show you towards the end. Now I'd like to talk about the Shimpan Ejon Don Quixote that was created in 1976. It was published by Gohachi in a limited edition of 185 copies. And if we compare both illustrated Don Quixote books, the new edition is slightly larger and each illustration is printed on a single page opposed to the first edition in which each image is laid out on a double spread. In the Shimpan Don Quixote, due to the fact that Serizao used the Katasome dyeing technique on paper, as you can see, the color palette is no longer restricted to the subtle Tandok one red, green, and yellow. And this actually adds certain depth to the composition, as you can see. The polychrome vibrant colors do not decorate but define the figures that are portrayed in the scene. Additionally, there are fewer visual elements used in the composition. And on this aspect, I'd like to mention that referring to his first illustrated Don Quixote, Serizawa himself described it as excessive, meaning that according to him, there were too many elements in one single image. Serizawa's meticulous personality often drove him to dream of the excess in a stencil to adjust the shape. And this was seen as a weakness by Soed Suyanagi. In 1936, when he created the first illustrated Don Quixote, he was still beginning his journey in stencil dyeing. So we can understand that it was later in his life that his distinctive style became crystallized. In the new edition, the double spread comprised an illustration on the left side page and the number and title of the chapter on the right side page. Serizawa maintained the same number of scenes for the new edition and the characters contained in the images are practically the same. The only difference is the style he used in the illustrations. Now let's remind ourselves that Serizawa had been perfecting the quality of his books from 1936. So it was in the following 30 years that he developed this recognizable style that greatly relied on being dying and various cultural borrowings that are present in his work. And wondering about what motivated Serizawa to create this new edition, we can infer various reasons. 
First, that he wasn't satisfied with the first illustrated Don Quixote, as he mentioned in various publications related to the book. Secondly, he attributed his Ejon Don Quixote to Yugako Buncho, calling it Yugako's book. Thirdly, after the Second World War in Japan, there were a number of publications taking Cervantes characters to be portrayed in different settings. Amongst these books, we can mention Ishihara Yoshiro's poem, The Homecoming of Sancho Panza, that was published in 1955, Tokyo no Don Quixote by Kobayashi Nobuhiko, uh, published in 1976, and Yoru no Don Quixote from the 1970s by Hiroyuki Itsuki. The revival of Don Quixote books during this time period may have motivated Serizawa to return to his previous Don Quixote and create a new version. Now, previous to the creation of the new illustrated Don Quixote, Serizawa produced a series of paintings on wooden boards, the ones that you've seen on the slide, and now, as you may know, a major activity pursued by Serizawa was collecting. From 1919, he turned his interest to votive tablets. For those who are not familiar with this type of objects, they are wooden plagues that are usually hung uh, in Shinto shrines with a written message for the gods to receive. In a similar manner to the votive tablets, Serizawa sought to represent these illustrations using a primitive expression, highlighting the brushwork and rich color palette that is portrayed in these images. These paintings reflect Serizawa's need to create sketches that are both expressive and untied, possibly as a preparation for the new illustrated book. And I consider this fact because uh, Serizawa would create a great number of sketches before he created his, his uh, stencils for the dye works. So these drawings can be considered part of the process before creating the Shimpan Don Quixote. Referring to the landscape scenes in the Shimpan Don Quixote, I like to emphasize the transcendental influence of Bingata textiles permeating Serizawa's palette. Here we can observe an enriched and so exotic view of the Don Quixote, enhanced by these multicolored compositions. By drawing parallels between these landscapes and other works, like this piece on the left, a work that represents Okinawa's daily life and customs, we can observe similar visual devices that of, offer a very distinctive view of the scenery in Serizawa's mindset. Although this work is more detailed compared to the Shinpan Don Quixote, we can notice a very similar color palette present in both works and the way the compositional elements are organized, considering the proximity of the mountains and trees, that appear from both sides of the picture plane is something that can be appreciated in both works. In the Shin Pan Don Quixote, some scenes are emblazoned in hexagonal or ovoidal frames, echoed in previous designs. And this is not limited to the Serizawa books. On occasions, he used ornamental designs to frame his illustrations. And this is a feature that he explored to great effect in the calendar designs. However, for the Shinpan Don Quixote, he resorted to simple lines to frame selected scenes. In the first scene of the Shinpan Don Quixote, Serizawa incorporated the title of the book into the image, a visual device he had replicated in other books where image and text are intertwined. For example, the social hero book on the left manifests the skillful 
differentiation between text and image that is achieved by the use of contrasting colors. Similarly, in the scene where Don Quixote is sitting surrounded by his books in an overwhelming cloud of imaginary thoughts that in instigate him to set out on chivalry adventures, with the cha chaotic use of text and image, we can perceive an introduction to the reader of this borderline state that defines our main character throughout the story. Now, relating to the horrific scene in which Don Quixote's books are burned by the priest and the barber, in Serizawa's rendition, it was placed not at the beginning of the story, but towards the second half of the book. If we consider Serizawa's life, where two major fires burned down his family homes, one in 1913 when he was only 18, 18 years old, and the other one in 1945 at the age of 50, this tragedy forced him to change his life decisions and destroyed a significant number of ob objects from his collection. We might think from the scene, which objects would have Serizawa saved and why? In the final scene in the illustrated Don Quixote, where our main character passes away quietly, accompanied by friends who have followed him faithfully in his imaginary adventures, it is noticeable that the main character was curiously omitted in the new edition, or he was probably concealed behind the screen. In contrast, the first illustrated book portrayed Don Quixote lying in his futon, symbolizing his final journey to Hades. Now, I said I will talk about this smaller and shorter version of the illustrated Don Quixote. I'm still um, inquiring into this book and how it came to be, but what I can tell you today is that it was published in 1978 by Gohachi. It is an accordion type of book, Orihon, and it was printed using modern printing techniques. They added a brief text related to Serizawa's illustrations in a limited edition of 280 copies. Uh, also, it might, it might have been a request that served as a diplomatic gift, and that's why this book was created. It only contains nine scenes from Serizawa's new edition, and it's kind of like a... It, a mix from the first edition and the second edition of the Don Quixote. Okay. So to conclude today's lecture, I'd like to bring us back to the Minge movement ideals of mass production, low cost crafts, collaborative work and the use of local materials. The Serizawa books were not producing mass. In fact, there were, there were limited copies created for each title, which in terms of the costs made them inaccessible to common people. These are collectible art objects. And as for the collaborative work involved in producing them, the first illustrated Don Quixote was more attuned with this principle because it brought together artisans and Serizawa's family who helped in the production. Compared to the newer 1976 edition, where most of the work involves Serizawa's individualistic approach. Local materials were incorporated in the creation of the books. So in that sense, it is uh, relatable to the Minge ideals. And Serizawa's extensive network, and we have to think that uh, the paper making villages were also coping with the difficult times of the World War II. Uh, Serizawa 
had on his side a group of artisans who provided him with the raw materials to create his books. But as I mentioned, I consider that Yuga Kobuncho was crucial in his activity for producing the books, because as I said, he did this extensive work into Japanese uh, paper that could have um, given Serizawa the possibility to get connected with this network. I would dare to say that if Serizawa didn't cross Yugaku's, Yugaku Buncho's path, there wouldn't be any Serizawa books today. This is the end of my lecture, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosanna. So I actually visited one of the papermakers' village um, last month in February, um, called yeah. Inomatsu, and then um, like Jugaku Bunshu's exhibition is actually happened last autumn in the village. It's really your lecture is really mm -hmm. um, timely mm -hmm. for me personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And I think I'd like to take the question from the floor first. And moving on to the our online audience afterwards. So, is there any question from our audience? I was just wondering um, which whether you could tell us which vegetable dyes were used as pigments for the illustrations on paper, and also whether. Mordants were required on the cellular fibers to uh, fix the colors. Do you know? Um, mm, for the first question, he um, used the uh, isome, uh, the eye uh, plant that is produced in Japan for indigo, and the uh, mineral pigments for uh, the rest of the colors. Uh, I am not sure about the mordants that he used. I, I think he only, this is a supposition, I'm not sure about this, but I think he only used the pigments on, on the paper. Uh, and he actually used the, um, um, the soybean milk that you obtain by putting the beans in water for a full night, kind of like the yeah pigment um, medium. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Just curious. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question from Flora? Yes, Thank you very much, Rosanna. What a wonderful talk! Beautiful images, um, and the comparison between the uh, the original one and then the Shimka one, I think, was really really nicely made. So I had a message from Anna Jackson at the Victorian Albert Museum uh, when we advertised this talk, telling me that what appalling timing because she was actually going now to the opening of a Serizawa exhibition at the William Morris Museum, where yeah. one of these air holes is actually going to be on display, yeah. I think. So uh, that's a lot of fun. But I just wanted, could you say anything about in terms of connections between Serizawa and the UK-based arts and crafts movement. You talk a lot about, I'm very interested, you talk about the, the Spanish example, which I didn't know at all, so that's fascinating. But is there anything that, that's... Um... Yes, well, uh, from what I found in my research, um, Bernard Leach, uh, well, he did many trips to Japan, and he kept the connection with the Minge movement, and actually um, many of the works from the Minge members were sent to be exhibited in, in the UK. There was a gallery uh, by the name The Little Gallery that was based in London from around the 1930s. And I found this in the correspondence between um, Bernard Leach and Yanagi, where he was requesting works and then they were coming and, and they did exhibitions in this gallery. Uh, the gallery stopped operations around around the Second World War, but there were some uh, shows where Serizawa's work was um, displayed. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. Great. Um, I think I can see the question from the online. So Olivia, can you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Rosanna. That talk was wonderful. Um, from Professor Toshio Watanabe, uh, we have a question that says, Sancho Panza doesn't seem to feature much. Was this Serizawa's choice or the translators? Mm, that's a very good question. And I actually noticed the same thing from the book. In the beginning, I thought he wasn't in the illustrations at all, but I did notice him. I think it was to do with the selection of the scenes that Serizawa made. And um, in the scholarship, it's mentioned that Serizawa's selection of the scenes was based on a kind of a satirical view of the Don Quixote. So I consider this uh, yes and no, because as you know, there was also Dore's illustrations to kind of guide him through, through, the, through the selection of the scenes. And in the translation, there were many scenes where Sancho Panza was portrayed. So I don't think it had to do with the translation specifically. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So I have a question <laughs> if I may. So but for the first edition of Ehon Don Quixote, mm -hmm. is the inspiring Tanlokubon format yes. on color, because then they're using the Serizawa used the uh, book binding, Fukurotoji book um yes. book binding, book binding format. Yes. Then there's some separation in the middle of the double spread. Yes. But later edition, Shimpan Ehon Don Quixote, he used the uh, probably only form, but there's no separation in the middle. So is there mm -hmm. any like technical difficulties to use the uh, Fukurotoji format? Yes. And using then, a katazome? Very, oh. very good question. Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, actually, uh, when, when you look at the stencil um, in the collection, you can see that uh, when you do this in the Kurotoji kind of book. You have this side is one image, and this side is another image, a different image. So you have to do that, you have to match them in the middle. And that's one of the difficulties because the stencils were actually created like this. Whereas in the new edition, uh, because you have one stencil for one image, it's, it's much easier to do. The, the matching and, and everything. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So much. Um, okay. Any question from our uh, for our audience? Yes, just very briefly. So, would the the editions have been numbered? So, quite often, the sort of private press and small editions in Europe certainly are. Uh, you know, each one would be numbered. Yes, would, yes, they were. Uh, it, at the colophon, unusual with a, a Japanese context. Uh, the, they were from the books I, I looked into. They were numbered on the back in the colophon. And you can see which book, uh, specifically from, from the edition, is that book that you're looking at. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's a, a common uh, thing in the Japanese kind of publications. So I, I cannot answer you as far as that, but in the books that I encountered, yes, they were numbered as in, this is the 85 from uh, 185. Would there be subtle differences between each book? There were actually, um, so when, when, he, when he worked on the stencils, yes. he, he was applying the black ink, for example, in the first book. And the color was done by hand. So I looked at the, the book in the collection at the British Museum and a, a private collection in, in Spain. And you can see differences in, the, in where the colors were applied and, and the, also the, the hues are slightly different. Yeah. Uh, but not in seven, but later in the, in the second, in the later version? In the set in the second version, there wouldn't be so much difference in, in where the colors are placed, but probably in the hues. Yeah. 
the artist applied the hand color. Mm -hmm. The Serizawa himself did it or in studio work to collaborate with others. Well, his family was there, his children were outside <laughs> <laughs> the color. I imagine that he was very strict in saying, well, careful with that color. <laughs> and, and I actually thought um, at some point, was there a stencil for the color application? Because it looks very um, perfect when you look at the books, but but now you, when you when you look at the differences between the different editions, you can see that uh, there's no stencil for the colors. Okay. Yeah. I think we still have time. So, any question? Any further question from the floor? I think the fire in that burning book scene mm -hmm. is very impressive. The color looks quite complex compared to other like color blocks that we can distinct. Yeah. That one. It's so rich. I wonder if that is found in other scenes or other studies about books. I haven't come across other fire scenes in his books, but as I mentioned, I imagine because he had this um, impact in his life where, where fires burned down his homes, it would have been a very important scene for him in the book. So yes, I consider your point in, in that the book, this scene is very powerful. Yes. I just wonder like how is it achieved compared to other? Uh, you mean technically? Yeah. Mm. So in the first book, it was more like lines that created the fire, but in the Shinpan Don Quixote, uh, that area where the fire is, is the area that is exposed and you can die. So I imagine he mixed the colors to create this kind of complex composition. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So any other questions for the board? Mm -hmm. yeah, probably not. Then there's no question from me online, but thank you so much, Rodana. <laughs> great, and also thank you for our audience for great Q and session. So we have now come to the end of the lecture this evening. Um, our sincere thanks to Rosanna uh, for the insightful talk. The uh, recorded lecture will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And, send, um, and the summary of the talk will be featured in our upcoming e bulletin scheduled for release in early April following the Easter break. Um, once the lecture concludes, you may receive an email from Zoom tomorrow, especially for our online audience, containing a link to a feedback form, uh, or you may find it directly in your browser window and we highly value your input and would appreciate any feedback you can provide. Your comments are crucial in helping us enhance and maintain our lecture series. For our forthcoming third Thursday lecture on the 18th of April, we are thrilled to welcome one of Sainsbury Fellows, Dr. Jihei Hong, uh, who will be sharing insight into Japanese and Korean photography from the post-war field. Dr. Han is also organizing the symposium scheduled for next week on the 25th and 26th of March, titled Defining Identity Through Photographs, a Works of Japanese and Korean Photographers 1945 to 1980s. For further information, uh, please visit our website. So the such lectures, which have been running since 2001, are greatly supported by our funders, Yakult UK, the Great Britain Sasakawa Foundation, and Gatsby Charitable Foundation. The St. Mary's Institute wishes to thank our funders and our audiences for supporting this lecture series. Good night and thank you.